What is going on everyone and welcome to a very special video. We are covering the drop, the official drop of this massive patch. It is 1.01. .01. It is still experimental. Local Thunk just posted the patch notes. So if you do want to try this patch out, I'm just going to say right now, you're going to go to Steam, you're going to go to properties, you're going to go to betas, and you're going to opt into the experimental uh, patches. So now let's break down what happened because there is so much on this list and um sorry that was weird <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna read through it right now and uh go over each and every aspect so <clears throat> there's gonna be many little things here that aren't gonna matter too much but there's gonna be a lot of things that matter a lot so i may not cover every single one of these bullet points but we're just going to talk through them so we add a toggle for reduction motion removing the swirly background and gyrating card motion I think this makes a lot of sense. There's a few people um, who were commenting about getting a little nauseous while playing the game. And I think this is just uh, a little, you know, nod to them to help them out. Change default fallback tarot from full to strength when all tarots are on screen. Change gold stake. So that one's not really, you know, going to matter. Change gold stake random seeds. Now ensures that the first legendary joker on that seed is a joker that you have not won with on gold stake. Now, the only thing I don't love about this change, even though I totally understand why it's needed for completion is plus plus, because it's so hard to get those gold state tags with all the legendary jokers because you have to play so much, um, is you can kind of know what legendary is in that pack, but it's really only going to affect, you know, a handful of runs. Because once that's completed, once you've done all the legendaries, then it should go back to completely random. So all in all, it's like, I feel like this change is needed. I don't love it, but it's really something happening in the back end that if no one ever told you about, you probably wouldn't even notice or think about. Then we change the anti-scaling and white stake. Anti-3 is going to be a little bit less. Anti-4 is going to be a little bit less. Those third and fourth antis, I figure Local Thunk has the data that a lot of people are losing on those antis, and he felt the need to scale them back just a bit. Then when we go to green stake, again, a little bit easier on anti-2. I think quite a big difference on anti three and four going from 3,200 to 2,400, 9,000 to 7,000. That's going to make uh, those green stake runs and higher just a tad bit more achievable. I think especially that anti three to 3,200, it would sometimes catch me. Um, I think at purple stake is really where stuff got hard, but on those green stake runs, I know I lost a couple, especially on the black deck. We all know the black deck um, on that anti three. Moving over to purple stake. Anti-2 from 1,200 to 1,000, absolutely beautiful change. The 1,200 small blind in Anti-2 was brutal. Anti-3, 3,600 to 3,000. Anti-4, 10,000 to 8,000. And Anti-5, 25K to 22K. I think all of these changes are good. I think the, the scaling with those Antis at higher stakes was just a little too fast. I never was really bothered by the weight stake. But I think the green stake and purple stake changes these small little tweaks. I mean, they're not massive. We're not going from 25,000 to, you know, 1,800. But just taking it down that, you know, few percent points is going to make a big difference. And make just a few more varieties of runs possible. Okay, here's the big one. Changed orange stake. Scrap the increasing pack cross because it was... As Local Thunk said himself, it just was not fun. And add a new perishable mechanic. Jokers have a 30% chance to have a perishable sticker disabling them after five rounds. So basically, this can turn any joker into almost like a food joker. You know, the food jokers can go extinct. In this instinct, instinct, if you buy a perishable joker, you know in five rounds, it's gone. Now, this adds a whole new aspect in my head of the fact that you could be skipping. You know, maybe you got a bunch of perishable jokers and they're really solid and you feel like you can knock out a boss. Maybe you skip the couple blinds to preserve that perishable joker. We already kind of do this with some of the perishables like a seltzer. Um, and now this can be added as a mechanic for all jokers. I think this is really interesting. I'm curious to see how it works, especially the fact that now you have eternals and on the opposite end, you're going to have perishables at orange stake. Then we change gold stake. No longer minus one hand size. Can we all just get Juicy's in the chat? <laughs> if you watch my stream, you know Juicy, my dog, is the emote we use for when we're happy. Um, add a new perishable mechanic. Jokers now have 30%. Or, uh, sorry. Add a new rental mechanic. Jokers have a 30% chance to have a rental sticker, making them cost $1 up front and $3 every round. This is extraordinarily interesting. The only thing I worry about this mechanic is with rental. <sighs> 
if you don't have your economy going, which it's, you know, you're at higher stakes, I still think higher stakes are still going to be difficult. It's hard to get that economy going. Are you ever even going to touch a rental joker? Or are these jokers that you're just going to be like, nope, not worth it? Like maybe a couple of them are worth it. But more so what this adds is, and this is my only worry with this change, just more fluff to the shop. I think the perishable mechanic absolutely is going to be a thing. I think people still, you know, work around the eternal jokers. I'm worried that the rental mechanic may just bloat the shop a little bit and make the shops less useful. Um, which, look, I'm all for the strategy. I'm totally fine with that. I know, though, what Local Thunk is trying to do with these changes and make the game more interesting. I do think this is a very interesting mechanic, but I do worry what people and players are going to default to is just ignore them because paying three dollars every round for a joker you know especially let's say you wanted to play the small blind to see a shop there's no way i'm playing a small blind if i have a rental or, or two rentals that's just too much money in my opinion and i'm not going to get any reward so it's going to be interesting to see the balance of that we changed eternal to apply to jokers in buffoon packs i like that because eternals can have very interesting mechanics with stuff like madness or ink that are actually positives so I would love to see more Eternal Jokers to get more opportunities to play with those very interesting mechanics where, you know, cards that would destroy stuff like an Ink or, again, a Madness don't destroy it. So I want more opportunities to play with these Eternals. And we keep going. Upcoming blind tags can now be seen in the shop immediately after defeating a boss blind. Another fantastic change. I think just more information to the player about what to prepare for now that you've entered the next anti shop and you're, you're basically in that ante, you should be able to see what you're up against. And this is gonna be great. It's going to definitely change some decisions you have right after that boss blind. Some blinds are now being banned on challenge runs. Ban Crimson Heart and Verdant Leaf and Amber Incord on Jokerless. That's interesting. Ban Verdant Leaf on Typecast. Ban Verdant Leaf on Not Perishable. That, I mean, makes sense. Ban the plant on Mad World. I know there's a lot of back and forth, especially on the Reddit on whether people like or dislike these boss blinds in these challenges. It looks like Local Thunk just leaned, let's get rid of them and not have to deal with it. Some people really love the challenge, but I think a lot of players, especially maybe players who aren't wanting to put tons and tons and tons of hour into research, strategizing, min-maxing, you know, I think this is a good change for those players. I think for some of those players who want the massive challenge, they're gonna be a little annoyed by this, but you can always make your own challenge and put your own rules on yourself like Bellatro University does with his Jokerless challenges which he just goes into the normal game and refuses to buy the Jokers which makes that much much harder. We buffed Saturn to now give three molt instead of two molt for straights. We're trying to make straights become a thing. I I'm all for that. Bellatro University actually, Dr. Spectre, believes that Saturn's already a good card so I think he's definitely going to be trying to play some straights now. Buff Neptune to plus four instead of plus three on the molt. Gave Aries plus 50 instead of plus 40 chips for flush 5. I love this change to make flush 5 just a little bit more worth it over the normal 5 of a kind. Buffs, buffed Ceres to now give plus 4 molt instead of plus 3 molt on the flush house. I also feel like, why would you ever go after flush houses? So I do like this little buff to see if maybe they become more viable in a thing that people play. Especially on like an abandoned deck or checker deck where it can uh, come up a little bit easier. Alright, now we have a long list of changes. So let me grab a water. We changed the uncommon tag, now makes the uncommon joker free. I love this. Um, I thought the uncommon tag was already somewhat useful, but I rarely used it because I still rather just see a shop. Now that that uncommon is going to be free, maybe I'll take the chance. Change the rare tag, now makes the rare joker free. Again, this also depletes the frustration for when you skipped for a rare tag. It comes in the shop and it's a freaking seance and you're like are you kidding me at least now it's free i can sell it and you know i get four dollars for it five dollars for it at least i'm getting something out of it or you know i take it and try to play around it for a couple rounds um instead of you know just ignoring it completely negative polychrome hollow foil tags all make their rep respective jokers free again i love this i think this is a slight buff to tags that's needed because scene shops is so valuable and so important that they needed to make these tags worth it a bit more. Change investment to give $25 instead of 15. I think it's a good change. Um, I think it was already decently easy to manage your economy in this game, but I love rewarding this kind of play style. And I love the fact that this is going to increase what you can do with money even further. I think that's just a good option to have in the game. Changed eight ball. So now we're getting into 
all the Joker changes. We scrapped the old effect. The new effect is a one in four chance to spawn a tarot card when any played eight is scored. So there was some debate because um, this was leaked early on whether this was going to be any eight ball played or scored. So the fact that it's scored, I think it brings it back towards that common range. It may be a thing I try and play around. Making tarot cards is very important in this game. And if you maybe have an oops all sixes, but still one in four is a little hard. And the fact that that eight has to score. Well, now if I'm playing a high card build, you know, this is not a joker you probably can pick up versus if it was any eight played, definitely was a, a card that I'm like, ooh, you can get that, throw a couple eights in on your high card or well, not a couple eights because if you threw multiple, the eights would be a pair anyway. But you throw an eight in and you get that chance. So back and forth on whether this, this definitely buffs it because playing cards are garbage, but I don't know if it's going to matter too much. Change blue seal now creates a plant card on the final poker hand played during the round. I don't know. I feel like, isn't that what blue seal already did? Now creates a planet card of the final. Oh, you specifically get that poker hand and that planet. No, oh, I like that instead of being random. I think, you know, I may try some more blue seals out, especially if you can guarantee it's a flush five. You can guarantee that it's a high card. You can guarantee that it's a, a straight if you're trying this new Saturn build. Okay. I, I like that change. Change both Mad and Cleaver Joker. Scrap contains four of a fine effect and now applies to any hand that contains two pair. I think that's fantastic. It's already so hard to get four of a kind that you weren't going to really need the molten chips from these Jokers, so you never bought them. And now that it's, you know, going to a much more attainable poker hand, I think they'll be used a lot more and makes a lot more sense. York, we completely scrapped the old effect. You gain one times molt every 23 discards starts at 1x mole so i have to discard through 23 times to get to times two molt that seems wrong maybe i'm misinterpreting this one gains times one molt every 23 discarded oh cards cards not total discards okay this makes sense so basically if i have let's say i have the wasteful voucher and i can discard a full 20 cards with four discards or maybe even i have five discards and can do 25 i can get a full times x1 molt every uh every round i still don't think york is nearly as good as some of the other legendaries but i'll be interested to see how this plays magician tarot now applies lucky to two cards instead of one fantastic change was absolutely needed maybe i can finally do that lucky cat run that chat keeps asking me to do minus mask now only applies gold enhancement to scoring phase cards Cost seven dollars was six dollars. This makes sense. Minus mask was way too good, and it mixed with vampire was basically an instant win. It again, it was just too good. I think this is a very good change. Um, yeah, I think it should cost more, and you should have to actually score those face cards. It still can be fantastic, but it's not nearly as easy to just again. I was throwing an ace high card and playing a king queen jack and getting three gold cards for free when those weren't even scoring was kind of. It was kind of an insane card. Vampire now only removes enhancement from scoring cards, gives 0.1 molt per enhancement instead of 0.2, rare instead of uncommon. That's a huge debuff. I feel like two out of, of these threes, two out of these three would make sense. Um, I think all three is a little, a little much. Um, I would have loved it to be uncommon, have only 0.1 molt, molt per enhancement. And only removes enhancement from scoring cards. I think that first one is interesting because there's times where I kind of didn't want Vampire to take something off. And now I know if it's not scoring, it won't. But the fact that we basically have the, its usefulness right here. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't think it needed to move from rare to uncommon. But again, these are my first reactions, first thoughts. This is again, I don't want this to be taken like <laughs> I'm disagreeing with local thunk on his changes either. We're definitely gonna have to play and test and we're gonna absolutely do that. But first I just wanna go over everything. But um, my initial reaction is that seems like a lot. Change Madness now only applies on small big blinds, not on boss blind selection. Okay, uh, I guess that makes sense. Just bring it back just a bit in terms of how powerful Madness is, where it was giving you times 0.5 mole every single round. Now it's only doing it two out of three. Change to do list, poker hand no longer changes on payout. Always changes at the end of the round. That's very good. Won't get stuck on straight flush is the perfect example. Absolutely plus two there, local thunk. Uh, before with to-do list, you'd play the poker hand. You get money for that poker hand. And it would change every time you would get it. Well, if you got a straight flush, 
and you're playing a certain type of deck, it was literally impossible. So you, you would never, you would have to sell it. There's no point to it. Change the description shortcut to include more examples. That makes sense. Uh, shortcut, of course, allows you to make straights with spaces in between it. So I think some people are just confused on how that worked. Changed Ancient Joker. The selected suit is no longer able to repeat between rounds. I'm all for this. <laughs> Literally early on stream, we got clubs seven straight times. And while it didn't affect me, I could see that being just so annoying for a Joker that I feel like can't have a lot of credence in this game. Swashbuckler now adds sell value to all the Jokers. All others Jokers to Malt, not just the Jokers to the left. Swashbuckler can be used. Oh my god, I'm so excited to start using Swashbuckler with Egg. And then being able to have that molt on the left and then actually times that swashbuckler molt. Uh, I'm worried this might make it too powerful, but I'm so excited to try it out. Hanging Chad now re-triggers the first card played two times instead of once. That makes Hanging Chad a lot more viable and it actually probably could save your butt in quite a few scenarios. The fact that if you played a glass card, it re-triggered now, you know, the original playing it, then re-trigger, then re-trigger. Getting that times eight at that point would be a big deal. Moving on to Flower Pot, now includes a base suit of debuffed cards when determining if it will trigger. Thank you. Um, this makes a lot of sense to me because a debuffed card that's an 8 of spades is still an 8 of spades. Yes, I understand the point of being a debuff is it can't have magical effects, but it's still an 8 of spades. This makes Flower Pot just a little bit more viable. I'm sure Local Thong saw that maybe it was being underplayed a little bit, um, and that's why this change came. Bootstraps. To include current molt bonus in description... Oh yeah, so for some reason Bootstraps didn't let you know how much molt you were actually getting from, and you get, uh, I believe, plus two molt for every $5 in your bank. And you just had to do the calculation yourself. This is a nice quality of life, life change. All four sinful jokers, one of for each suit. They now each give plus three molt per suit instead of plus four. I do believe the things like Lusty Joker, which gave you the plus four molt per heart played, were just too powerful for common, so love this change. Banner now gives plus 30 instead of plus 40 chips for a main discard. Also love this change because Banner, especially on something like the Plasma deck, way too powerful. <laughs> you could basically go through the first four or five anties with Banner without discarding. It was, I like this change. I think the fact that Plasma deck's a thing, um, even more so called for this change. Fibonacci costs $8 instead of 7 because Fibonacci. <laughs> I love that. I love it's a little nod to the actual Fibonacci sequence, I, and I think Fibonacci itself was already pretty powerful, so I don't mind the extra dollar. Steel Joker now gives times 0.2 molt per steel in full deck instead of 0.25. Okay. I mean, that's understandable because I believe Steel Joker is uncommon. I think 0.25 is you're trending in on the rare territory, I think, for that card. So pulling it back, putting it in line with other uncommons, that makes sense to me. Odd uh, Todd gives 31 instead of 30 chips. It's an odd number. Let's go, Pog Todd, all day. Six cents. Now uncommon and six dollars was rare. Oh my god, we just used that as an example earlier about the rare tag not being worth it. Thank gosh, it's uncommon. Now I can be mad when I use an uncommon tag and get it, but still, that's huge. That's absolutely huge, especially for Wraith specifically. Oh my god, I love that. Um, so six cents, if you didn't know, that is the card where you play six it gets destroyed and you get a spectral card it's good but i don't think it should be rare and the fact that it's uncommon is fantastic hiker now gives plus five instead of plus four chips i think that's a great change because i think hiker is valuable but it was still underpowered this is going to be interesting and i can't wait to do some runs with hiker added gross michelle now has one six chance of going six instead of one and four i get this because Gross Michelle, in a way, the fact that it could go away so quickly was overpowered. Now, hear me out. You're thinking, wait, why would you want it to go extinct? Well, when it goes extinct, Cavendish can spawn. The fact that it goes extinct so quick, so if you got Gross Michelle, you know, blind one, goes extinct that blind, there's a 25% chance that happens. All of a sudden, your entire game can have Cavendish, which is a super powerful Joker. The fact that you get times three molt for a common Joker. Now, again, it has a precondition that Gross Michelle needs to go extinct on you, but... It's so powerful. So now Gross Michelle's going to take a little bit longer to go extinct, or this gives you incentive to buy an Oops All Sixes to make it go extinct. I think this makes a lot of sense. This really, in a way, is a um, a debuff to Cavendish, in my opinion, more than anything. It, it, it This obviously has to do with Gross Michelle, but this is a way to correct how powerful Cavendish was. Seance, now uncommon. Let's go. That was, again, you play a straight flush and you get a spectral card. That in Sixth Sense, again, useful. It's cool, 
but I want them to be on comments A because I want them to pop up more when, you know, the off chance I am playing a run that aligns with them. And then B, I don't want to use a rare tag or use a wraith and have those two pop up because that's just not what you're looking for in a rare joker. Riff Raff is now 6 instead of $4. Makes sense. You're getting two common jokers every single round. It's very powerful. Chains of Vagabond, now rare. I understand that it is one of the most powerful jokers in the game. It should not be uncommon. $8 instead of 6 Applies when you have $4 or less instead of 3 So I like this little give and take. You know, we're making it rare. We're making it expensive to buy. But we are giving you a little bit more leeway with your economy. And this also allows you, you know, if you get two tarot cards you don't want in your slots and you only have two slots available, you can sell one, maybe still be under that $4 cap and uh, be able to create more tarot cards. And just, again, as I'm talking through, I realize that you all may not know every single tarot card. Vagabond creates a tarot card every hand played when you have $3 or less, now $4 or less. Cloud9, now 7 instead of $6. Makes sense, was a good economy joker. Mail and rebate, also more expensive, is $5, was 3 Mail and rebate, especially when you deck manipulate and let's say you had all kings, was crazy because every discard is giving you tons and tons of economy. Reserved parking, now common, was uncommon. I think this is a good change. It's a good economy joker, especially in those examples we we're talking about with mail and rebate, but it wasn't the end all be all. So I like the fact that it's going to show up a little bit more often. Trading card, now cost six, was five. Trading card was very powerful, makes sense to me. Campfire now gains 0.25 molt per card sold, was 0.5. Campfire was very strong. I kind of wish there's a middle ground here with like 0.3, but, 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 I understand this change. I'm curious to test it out. I mean, again, we have to remember, this is an experimental patch. This is just the first attempt at all these changes. We're going to provide feedback. This is why Local Thunk is making it experimental. He's going to test to make sure, first of all, everything works. We're going to play on this patch for a bit. And we're going to see, you know, what needs correcting from here. This is a constant changing thing. But all in all, you know, so far, I know we have a little bit more to go. But Local Thunk, I mean, just hit the ball out of the park. This game is incredible. <laughs> this patch is fantastic and just shows you he listens to the community. He loves this game and he's constantly working on it. He really understands what's going on. Smiley Face now gives you plus five molt per face card instead of plus four. I like that it differs itself now from the um, Suit Jokers quite a bit because the Suit Jokers got debuffed to plus three and now we lifted Smiley Face to plus five. I, I think this is a good change. Bloodstone. Now it's a one, two chance to proc instead of one and three. Heck yeah. I mean... If this was the case in the finals of the Bellatro tournament, I would have been dust to Bellatro University. I still lost. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> but he would not have lost that earlier run. I love this change. Makes Bloodstone more viable. And we have a little bit... There's some more routes now to get to those super high scores that we're all looking for. Onyx now gives plus 7 molt per club card. Was plus 8. I think a minor tweak there. I don't know how much I'm going to notice it, but it obviously is a debuff. We got Glass Joker, now gives 0.75 molt per Glass Destroyed, was 0.5. This makes sense, considering Glass is only broke 1 in 4. I mean, I bet Local Thunk was tempted to put this all at times 1 molt, but I think times 0.75 is a good middle ground to try it first, and we're, we're going to kind of see how worth Glass Joker is going forward now. Stuntman now gives plus 250 chips, was plus 300. Understandable. <laughs> Stuntman was almost a must-buy with how great it was. Moving on, the Invisible Joker now requires two rounds, cost $8, was three rounds, and cost $10. I don't think Invis Joker really had a problem with how it worked, but I don't mind this change. I think it's going to make it more viable for high stakes runs now. Invis Joker was really a Joker you looked at for copying Blueprint or Brainstorm or Mine or Baron or Tribulet or Idol when you're going for super high scoring runs. And maybe you kind of ignored it for high stakes. This is going to make it more viable at high stakes, so I like the change. Burnt Joker now is rare, was uncommon. Burnt Joker is incredibly valuable. Every discard basically levels up that hand that you discard. Not every discard, the first discard of a round levels up that um, type of hand. And first of all, was crazy OP for high card runs and probably still is. But now that it's rare, it's going to be a lot harder to grab. Change the wording on most scaling jokers to refer to this joker. That makes a lot of sense. Fixed Bug, opening a booster pack with the hand size of zero was unskippable, so that makes sense. Fixed Bug, where the card generated by certificate was not being debuffed by the boss. Oh, I thought that was on purpose. <laughs> that, I mean, that makes sense, because what would happen is if you didn't use that seal card right away, it would get debuffed, so I figured it was a bug. And that's it. 
I am out of breath. I'm going to get this video edited and uploaded. Let me know what your thoughts on your changes are. Overall, I love it. I can't wait to try this out. And, um, you know, let's have a fun week of Bellatro in the experimental 1.01c patch update. See you for your next one very soon.